Hi, everybody. It's me, Katie Couric. Did you know I have a newsletter called Wake Up Call that goes out six days a week? It has everything you need to know to start your day. The candidates to watch in 2024, my latest podcast interview with Michael J. Fox, the best things to eat for gut health, summer fashion trends, the truth about CBD, and so much more. Head to katiecouric.com. That's K-A-T-I-E-C-O-U-R-I-C.com to sign up. And I'll see you in the morning, just like old times. L.A. is expansive. There's nearly 10 million people living here, and it comes with a lot of noise. But if you tune those sounds out and listen close, you'll hear the real L.A. What up, these star? Hey, Jim. How you doing? I'm going to be a father? <laughs> yes. You Feeling This, a fiction podcast mixtape about love. Listen to it on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. Hello. From Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're talking about folk heroes, women whose lives and stories took on mythic proportions. In the north of Brazil, legends swirled around a crew of bandits. They roamed the backcountry, at times giving to the poor, other times stealing from the rich, but always looking out for themselves. Heroes to some, villains to others, the most famous of them all was Lampiao's Cangaceiro crew. Today we're talking about Mrs. Lampiao, the woman who still captures imaginations today, Maria Bonita. Maria Dea was born in the early 1900s in the northeast Brazilian state of Bahia. The daughter of a farming couple, Maria grew up rather poor. Her family's ranch was near the Bahia Sergipe border, an arid bush good for raising livestock and rife with bandits. From a young age, Maria and her parents knew of the Cangaceiros. Bands of roving outlaws spread throughout northern Brazil. The bandits often wore colorful kerchiefs and leather hats, chests crisscrossed with cartridge belts. They carried their rifles over their shoulders like an oxen's yoke, or in Portuguese, a canga, their namesake. Families like Maria's feared and admired the cangaceiros. The bandits were often from similarly poor backgrounds. The backlands were no stranger to poverty, especially as rich landowners expanded their control over North Brazil. Cangaceiros stole and attacked the rich primarily, and were known to offer charity to the poor. But they were rough and often cruel. Growing up, Maria's life was fairly quiet. When she was a teenager, she married a local cobbler, but their marriage was bitter and loveless. Maria spent most of her time back on her parents' ranch. And that's where she met Lampiao. Lampiao had already made a name for himself as a bandit king. At 24 years old, he dedicated himself to a life of banditry after police killed his father. He was a guerrilla fighter, an extortionist, a robber, and a murderer. He was also literate and used reading glasses, a signature characteristic among his crew. He was feared and respected. Legend has it he got his name, meaning oil lamp, because he could fire his lever action rifle so quickly he never let the light of the muzzle go out. One day around 1930, Lampia was at Maria's parents' ranch when he caught sight of her. The next day, she joined his crew as its first female member. Her life changed in an instant, and Maria Dea became Maria Bonita. Maria Bonita, or Pretty Maria, was also known as Donna Maria in the group. She rode horses and carried a rifle alongside the other cangaceros. The bandits were nomadic. They knew the land well enough to devise escape routes and find medicinal herbs and rations, and Maria knew how to sew. She stitched the crew together between raids and decorated the rucksacks they hid their spoils in. Maria wasn't exempt from taking part in the cruelties of the cangaceros. She participated in raids and likely suffered at the hands of the other bandits. But popular stories of her time in the group painted her as a limiting factor to Lampiao's own ruthlessness. In one particular story, A Venezuelan Boy Scout traveling Brazil on foot told newspapers he and his friends had been taken captive by Lampiao's group. Lampiao suspected the boys were cops and fed them coffee with salt and water with hot peppers in it. It was a cruel last meal. 
the boy had been tied to a tree, sure he was about to die, when a young woman strolled up to him. She hit him on the shoulder and playfully observed, boy, you sure are cute. Apparently, Maria's fondness for the boy disarmed the bandits enough that the scouts were all set free the next day. The boy attributed his survival to Maria's charming nature. In 1932, Maria gave birth to her and Lampiao's only child, a baby girl named Aspejita. But Cangaceru life was no place for a baby. They left her with a trusted rancher to raise until she was school age. They visited now and again, but they'd never see Aspejita grow up. In the early hours of July 28, 1938, the bandits stirred to the first rays of sunlight. And soon after, to the sound of gunshots. Lampiao, caught off guard, fell instantly. Maria called out to the bandits who tried to run, reminding them of their loyalty to the Cangaceros. When the dust cleared just 20 minutes later, Maria, Lampiao, and nine other bandits were dead. In death, Maria was forced to be part of a gruesome spectacle. The preserved heads of the 11 Cangaceros were displayed in public. They wouldn't be buried for another 30 years. Even before their demise, Maria and Lampiao had already become the stuff of legends. Their story was printed in the form of cordels, folk literature pamphlets of Northeast Brazil, and retold through oral traditions. In 1957, Brazilian musician Volta Seca released a collection of songs associated with Lampiao's Cangaceros, titled Songs of Lampiao. A few years later, folk singer Joan Baez released her own version of one of them. Even today, Lampiao and Maria are still featured in comics, movies, and soap operas. All month, we're talking about folk heroes. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Talk to you tomorrow. Hello, this is Laverne Cox. I'm an actress, producer, and host of The Laverne Cox Show. Do you like your tea with lemon or honey? History-making Broadway performer Alex Newell. When I sing, the Holy Ghost shows up. That's my ministry, and I know that well about me. That's the tea, honey. Whoever it is, you can bet we get into it. My guest and I, we go there every single time. I can't help it. Listen to The Laverne Cox Show on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. You like jazz. Your passenger likes country. You settle on blues. This is the only kind of compromise you can expect inside a Lexus hybrid vehicle. That's because a Lexus hybrid is designed to go beyond compromise. Go far without having to recharge. Go fast with a formidable gasoline electric powertrain. Go with all the luxury of a Lexus. So, if you ever find yourself compromising in a Lexus hybrid, it won't be our fault. Lexus. Experience amazing. Click the banner to discover more. What happens when the right people connect? At MITRE, breakthrough technology advances. People fulfill their passions. Diversity fuels innovation. And our way of life thrives. From health to transportation and global security, cyber and AI to space and back again, there's no higher calling than making the world a safer place. Let's connect. MITRE.org careers.